Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate your interest in Central Michigan University and our Master of Arts in Learning Design and Technology, and then also sort of the special opportunity that uh, the, 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 the faculty actually sort of brought up um, from the ground up as a service uh, to our community of teachers. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself at this time. So my name is Tony Sapienza. I'm an Associate Director of Marketing with the University. I have the pleasure of working with our online degree programs. This is one of those programs that I work closely with today. I'll serve as your host. And then joining to me uh, today are three fabulous colleagues. So first off is Dr. Troy Hicks. He's the Program Director for our Master of Arts in Learning Design and Technology. He'll really help bring a lo great level of ex um, expertise to the program, as well as will provide some great insight into this opportunity that him and his colleague, also joining us today, Dr. Mike DeShriver, um, sort of created with their uh, faculty, uh, colleagues, colleagues of the faculty within our educational technology um, unit. Dr. DeShriver works closely with this program and then also closely with our Doctor of Educational Technology uh, students as well in that program. And then another individual uh, that I'd like to introduce you to is Katie Bowman. So Katie Bowman's an Assistant Director of Enrollment with our online graduate programs, most, more specifically our cohort programs. You're gonna find that Katie's an awesome, just an awesome advocate. Um, as you get into this program, she's really a great asset that you'll have in your corner and a great champion. Anywhere from getting you registered to your classes to serving as sort of one single point of contact for where to go for questions and how to find assistance. Um, she's just a great individual that will come alongside of you and is one of those support services that the university puts in place to really help ensure and guide you uh, through your success in the program. In terms of an agenda, here's some of the aspects that we'll cover today. So we'll go start off by giving you just a brief overview of CMU, just in case you're not that familiar with us. And then we'll sort of kick things over to Dr. Hicks and Dr. DeShriver where they can really dig into the special opportunity that the university and more specifically the College of Education and Human Services, which, which is where this program sits, um, created to sort of be a service to our um, faculty and our colleagues and our, our fellow teachers out in the field uh, dealing with the, the current situation and the environment that we're all uh, living in as our reality today. So we'll talk about the special opportunity with the, the program. <clears throat> then we'll move into more of the nuts and bolts of what the actual program is from a cohort format. That's gonna include overview of the program, the various courses that make up the program. We'll touch on academic rigor and expectations. as well as sort of the course management and delivery uh, platforms that are utilized in the program. And then it sort of conclude the session with identifying some of the special services that Central Michigan University puts in place uh, to again sort of build up what I call a circle of support around you for success. And then we can kind of move into financial aid assistance, uh, the application admittances process, and then any uh, questions that may come to mind. Those questions can be communicated through the chat box, so we'll go ahead and monitor those. We also like to have this be an engagement session. So if you wanna unmute, uh, unmute your microphone, you're more than welcome to do so and ask the, sort of ask those questions on the fly as well. Questions can be asked uh, as we go, so as we're on certain slides, if you wanna type those into the chat, then you're more than welcome to do so. Um, and then we'll kind of open things up towards the very end for more of a Q&A information session. So I think with that, let's go ahead and jump in. So Central Michigan University, um, again, in case you're not that familiar with us as an institution, founded it in 1892 as Central Michigan Normal School and Business Institute. So obviously, uh, the passion for teaching uh, runs very deep in our blood and who we are and who we continue to identify with, even though as the university has certainly grown and evolved over the past 125 plus years. Um, <clears throat> you'll find that that same student-centric approach to uh, who we were when we initially were conceptualized as an institution is still very prevalent today. You'll find that with Dr. Hicks and Dr. DeShriver. They really have a passion for teaching, working with those educators in the field. Um, many of them were educators in the field at one point in their early careers. So you'll find that student-centric approach is still very uh, uh, very much a part of who we are. 
Obviously, Central Michigan University is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission of um, the North Central Association of Colleges and Schools. And then more recently, through Dr. Hicks' uh, leadership, as well as his fellow colleagues, this particular program has been um, ITC certified. So CMU is proud to be the first higher education institute with a master's program that meets all the International Society for Technology and Education standards for edu educators. So it really speaks to the quality of the program the faculty have put together within um, this program and then uh, again through the College of Education and Human Services. And I'm sure Dr. Hicks and Dr. DeShriver will touch on more with that ITC certification and what that sort of means for you uh, upon graduation. So I think that with that, Troy, I'm gonna click things over to you and we can kind of get into more of the nuts and bolts of the program. Great, hey, perfect. Thanks so much, Tony. And I just put in the chat there, curious to know how many are uh, already connected to CMU in some way. Feel free to share your maroon and gold pride there in the chat room if you uh, are an alum, so fire up. And um, yeah, let me tell you just a tiny bit about the program, the normal program, and then you're gonna hear tonight um, uh, with Dr. Shriver and I talking a little bit about what this specialized cohort is going to look like too. So um, we've recently revised our program as Tony indicated. We were honored to be uh, recognized through ISTE um, as a, a certified program, meaning our curriculum is in alignment with all 24 of the ISTE standards. We can talk a little bit more about that later if people have questions. It does also mean that um, you could go on to submit a portfolio to ISTE to become an individually certified ISTE educator, and I can answer questions about that as well. Um, but typically, we are a 30 credit hour, 10 course program. Our semesters uh, go in eight week chunks. So for instance, if you were to start in fall, you'd have fall one in September, October. Um, you'd have fall two that stretches from late October to December. And then you'd have January, February, spring one, um, and then spring two, uh, although it doesn't feel like spring today here in Michigan, <laughs> would be in March and April, and so on and so forth. And it would normally be a five semester uh, sequence. Well, we'll talk a little bit about what this special cohort with your partnership and the mentorship is going to look like as well. Um, the good news is that the job market is um, increasing. These stats might be a little out of date right now, given where we're at and knowing um, what the need is going to be for online and hybrid types of engagement and learning. Um, but we do, uh, we are proud to know that we're in a market that's getting bigger and bigger. And um, if you need that additional NP uh, endorsement on your Michigan teaching certificate, there's no MTTC test or anything that comes with it. But as you go through our sequence of courses, if that's another endorsement that you want to uh, um, apply, you can do that as well. So that's a little bit of the overview. And then I'm gonna give you this, the very top level overview, and then we're gonna kind of shift pretty quickly after this where my colleague, um, Dr. DeShriver is gonna tell um, some of the original ideas and thinking that came behind this special opportunity and program. We uh, are very fortunate to have been given approval by our Dean, by our Provost, by our President, and given you, um, this moment where we can, as Tony said, be responsive to the needs of Michigan's K-12 teachers, go to the roots of what CMU has tried to do over its 125 plus year history and help you move forward in your career while also doing substantive and meaningful work within your school and district. We are gonna be able to offer the full 10 course sequence for $9,990. Now I put that little asterisk and caveat there. There are a couple other costs and we're trying to answer all those questions and figure out the financial aid and things like that. We'll come back to that a little bit more at the end, but essentially this is almost half price of what the normal tuition would be. And that's something that the president, provost and dean have approved for you as Michigan educators. So with that in mind, I'm gonna come back and tell you a little bit more later about some of the logistics, but I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague here. And Mike, are you set to go? Yep, can you hear me? We can, take it away. Okay, so the the MALDT program that, that Troy talked about, the, the ISTE certified program is one that we're pretty proud of. And its main focus is the concept of technology integration in general, right? And you would normally work through that program and take classes um, in instructional design, multimedia design, 
basic technology integration, creative ways to think about technology integration in your classroom. There's one class and how to develop an online module. Um, and you're still gonna get all that with the special cohort that we're thinking about, but given what's happening in schools right now, and given what we perceive to be probably continued need for at least short-term online classes next year and into the future, um, an unknown need for more online and hybrid type classes in K-12, we, we took a step back and said, what can we do right now to really address um, these needs? And so what we're doing is taking all that curriculum that was ISTE certified and generally speaking about integrated, integrating technology and layer on top of it, um, one big project for you guys that you will revisit through all 10 classes. And that one big project is gonna be, you will design and implement and evaluate and then revisit your own online class, basically. So if you're a 10th grade teacher and you've got a, let's say an AP psychology class that you teach, you might say, I'm gonna put this entire AP psychology class online. If you're a third grade teacher, you might put your entire experience online. And you're gonna revisit that through a bunch of different lenses. One's an instructional design lens, one's a multimedia lens, one's a lens of you know, creative implementation, one's about um, creating more social, um, connection in an online class. Um, and so this, to be honest, might require a little bit more work from you, which we want to be upfront about because we think that when you come out of the other end of this cohort, um, which is going to be compressed both in time and in work, we hope that you will be one of the teacher leaders, one of the experts in your district that other people can come to and say, hey, you know, I want to put my class online for a week, or I need to put my class online for six weeks, or um, I'm interested in doing this um and maybe changing my career and you'll you'll be that teacher expert or maybe you'll get a new job in your district or another district as a um an online coordinator or something like that but we're, we're hoping that you will become an expert in 15 15 months in 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 like i said designing delivering evaluating and this concept of revisitation is really important because i have a colleague who's actually the director of a k-12 online school and she said what we're trying to do in 15 months they usually do in about three years because the first time you teach it, eh, it goes pretty well, but there's some things that you need to you know you need to change the second time around. Then the second time you change them and you revisit and you're like, oh, that's pretty good. And then about the third time, you really feel good about it. Um, and we're going to try to get to that point where you really feel good about these online classes that you're, that you're creating um, in the 15 months. Now, the nice thing about that is I think next year we should all assume that at some point, we're probably going to be off online again, right? Like they're talking about a second wave of the coronavirus. So if you're in this cohort, even if you start face to face, let's say November 15th, your school says we're going to be online until January 1st, you'll be working through that with us. All right. Um, and getting the expert expertise of the faculty member in each individual class, but also the expertise of and if you can go to the next slide here. Um, Oh, sorry, can you go one forward and then one back just so that my narrative works a little better. The other thing we've added to this cohort is you usually have an advisor in the MALDT cohort with the advisors more about picking the right classes and maybe doing your ISTE certification stuff like that. You're not just going to have an advisor in this special cohort, you're going to have a mentor. And this mentor is going to work with you to make sure that this big project, which is to, again to design your own class is truly seamlessly integrated into the program. Right, to make sure that what you're doing in EDU 708 really feeds into that. And if it's not, to help you make sure that that happens. The other thing your advisor might do is they might provide you with their expertise. I was the director of technology in both private and public schools for 12 years and have a pretty good idea how K-12 skills work with this. But I don't really have a math pedagogy background, right? So if you happen to be one of my mentors, you'll get some of my expertise as a tech director in the past, some of my expertise as a theoretical researcher in TPAC and creativity. But you'll also get part of my job as your mentor will be to connect you with other people that have expertise that I don't or that we may not in the program. So if you're a, a seventh grade math teacher, I'll try to maybe connect you with the, um, the math methods faculty in our department. So they'll come to one of our meetings and be like, have you tried this? Have you thought about this? That kind of stuff. Or maybe even people from outside of academia that work in public schools that we know. So that mentor is really somebody that is totally coordinating everything that happens in your program for those 15 months. And that is something that we're really excited about. And it's gonna, again, provide you with that extra level of, of support from CMU at this time when it's really necessary. And then if you can go back one slide now, 
Um, the other unique thing that we have chosen to do with this is that um, you've probably seen in some of the advertising, we're asking you to apply in pairs. And this is really purposeful for two reasons. One, we believe that this large design project is really going to benefit from any sort of collaborative learning, right? So you're going to learn with and from your partner. And given that they will be from your school district, you guys are going to be working under the same set of expectations. So you've all worked, all of your school districts are working on or have worked on a learning continuity plan and had it approved by your local ISD and by the state. And those are going to be different from school to school. So if you're working with somebody from your school, you will be able to understand the, the expectations and the standards set forth in your learning continuity program better than anybody else. Hopefully your mentor will understand them really well with you and then kind of check each other on that. Okay, so it's an additional layer of accountability by, by coming in pairs to make sure that not only are you meeting the needs of your students, but meeting the expectations and the standards that are set forth in the learning continuity plan in your school. Okay, so those are three very different things than you would otherwise get if you were just applying to our standard MALDT program. And we think at this point in time, they provide you with like the help that you need to teach your students. But we also think, you know, looking at some of the stats that Troy showed you earlier, this really gives you a leg up in the in the market too like if you're thinking you want a new job in your school or you want to look for a new job in another school or you want to be an instructional designer somewhere this is going to be an experience that will prepare you maybe better than than any other master's program out there right now to do that when you're done so i think i'll pass it back over now um let's see we probably need to go two slides forward at this point given that i skipped around yeah, that that's quite all right uh, we'll, we'll kind of pause here for just a moment as we're um getting ready to talk a little bit about the tuition and some of the things that we know at this moment <laughs> related to the costs and how payments are going to work. Uh, if anyone has um, a question and wants to drop it into the chat, that would be helpful. We could also welcome a few questions now. And if it's something we know we're going to answer in a few minutes, we can we can politely tell you that and we'll definitely get back to it. Um, if you already applied, how will I know, how will soon you know who my partner is? Um, the letter of recommendation will be helpful. And also a little bit later on, we're gonna tell you about an additional second separate um, Microsoft form. That's just a quick little survey. We're gonna have you and your partner fill out. So we will definitely get back to that question. That's a great one, thank you. Any other quick questions that we can answer for you before we move forward? The partners have to be from our district or nearby. So. Yep, I'm, I'm glad that came up. That's come up in a couple of emails. It came up in our webinar last week. Here's the party line I have to tow at the moment. We got approval from our Dean, President, Provost that said Michigan K-12 teachers in partnership from the same district. That was the original approval that we got about, oh, what, Mike? Two weeks ago. <laughs> so we are, the, you've probably heard uh, unprecedented and building the plane while you're flying it 150 times in the last five weeks. Uh, we're going to say it again tonight. This is unprecedented. We are building the plane while we're flying it. I've had many people ask me if we got a partner at a similar type of school or maybe within my ISD or RESD. Is that possible? The answer is right now, I don't know. Um, but we're going to take that back to our administrators and see if that's possible. The other answer is that we are building this database of people who are saying, oh, I'm in Cedar Springs or I'm in Ovid Elsie and uh, I need a partner. And oh, hey, guess what? You may not have even known this, but we've got someone else. So we might be able to help you with that too. Another quick question. Yeah, this would be a great problem to have, Kelly. If we get more than 24 applicants and they are qualified and we are able to take that back to our administrators and say, hey, look, we've got 48, 50 applicants here. Um, could we do two concurrent cohorts? Could we have two kind of running at the same time? That is definitely uh, an answer uh, that we are gonna look for. And I think, knock on wood, we might be able to make that happen. Um, Can I jump Sheila, in real quick there, Troy, though? Yeah, and I'll answer Sheila's question once we get back from that. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, just as it relates to that, we're hoping that if we get lots of qualified candidates, we might be able to offer multiple cohorts. We're not sure about that. There is quite a bit of attention for this program right now. So in the end, it may be 
a competitive program to get into. And the one thing that I will encourage you to do if you're interested is we have the regular application through the CMU webpage. There's also this secondary application that Troy alluded to that's in Microsoft Forms. In that secondary application, you have to write an essay with your partner and then you, have, you also have to get a recommendation from an administrator in your school. Those two things are gonna be really important as Troy and I and the rest of our colleagues evaluate people for this program. So I would say, if you're gonna spend a lot of time on anything, spend a lot of time on that essay and, and really try to ask your administrator to speak to your leadership potential, right? That's what we're, what we're looking for, is people that can go through this program and come out on the other side as experts and leaders, okay? So don't, don't take those for granted. Don't write them in five minutes to spend a little time on them. Really try to convince us how you and your partner will work well together towards this end and then ask your administrator to do the same thing. Um, and that will help us in the ap application process as well. Um, but it'll, it'll, put, it'll help put you ahead um, in the application pool. And we do have several questions in here, Troy. Are you looking at those or? I am, and I think I answered Sheila's, um, but I'll come back to that again if we need to. So. Um, and Katie, I'm going to call on you in just a moment to see if you have any updates on any of this information. I'm, I'm going to tell what I think we know right now, and maybe you've had other conversations in the last day or two. Um, here's what we know. We know that the President, Provost, and Dean have approved $9,990 per, per participant. We also are pretty confident that we will work out some kind of payment plan. We are pretty confident that this will all still qualify for the normal types of financial aid and other assistance that you might be able to get. Um, what we are not so sure about is actual timelines and payments and deadlines and things like that. Um, and we also know that people have had questions like, I'm currently enrolled, um, can I get, I'm halfway through my program, can I get the special rate? I don't think that applies to anyone tonight, but unfortunately, this is for people who are gonna enroll starting here in June. Um, Katie, do you have anything that you can add to this conversation at this point? It seems natural to kind of jump in at this moment. You know, I don't really have any updates. I think that um, our financial services and billing department is working hard to try to, you know, decipher what we can and can't do. Um, this is a, a great rate and uh, there will be some fees. Just want to make you aware as, as Dr. Hicks alluded to, the 99.90 is for tuition. Um, we are looking into some other fees, but there is a $50 fee when you submit the application on the CMU website. Um, and there's generally a $225 per semester student service fee that's assessed to students as well. So those are some things that uh, we're still still trying to look at and still trying to get the timing down of the billing and how everything's going to work. But um, we'll get those things hammered out and, and nailed down pretty quickly and be able to share that uh, with the group that's accepted. But still a work in progress at this point. Yeah, and we'll come back. We have a slide on that a little bit later too. Can I jump but... in for one more short thing, Troy? Yep. Um, I think you, you said you kind of answered Sheila's question about, you know, people who aren't specifically classroom teachers. Andrew asked about coaching. Um, I think Troy kind of answered this, but any position that is directly or indirectly supporting teaching that would be involved in this K-12 online movement, we would encourage you to apply. And again, I'll just go back to that essay. If you're both coaches, in the essay, talk to us about how you would benefit from what you're hearing about this program and how you could come out the other end of this program as even more of a, of a coaching leader for online learning, okay? Thanks, Dwight. Yeah, perfect. And we, and we can hopefully have a little time for some more interactive Q&A about these things here at the end. So, and we'll come back to that pricing question again. So you'll hear from Katie again too. All right, pardon me while I'm flipping through slides to get back to where we need to be. Okay, so here is what we're estimating the timeline to be. Um, by May, well, actually, we know this one. <laughs> by May 8th, we need to have two pieces of information for sure. We had to have you go to that CMU application page, which we'll reiterate that and talk about that a little bit further on in the slides. So you submit your official CMU application. You want to get that piece done. You and your partner both have to submit an application. We will also talk about this additional information form. And again, that's that Microsoft form. Um, and we'll have the URL. We'll drop that in the chat room in a little bit. We'll email you and follow you up, follow up with that too. That's where you would put in your information, your partner's information, 
that essay that Mike was just talking about, you'd copy and paste into there. And then also you just tell us in that form, here's the principal, curriculum director, superintendent, here's the person that's going to be sending you a letter or sending you an email with our nomination. We'll come back to that information in a little bit. Um, fast and furious between May 8th and then stretching into that week of the 13th and the 22nd. As faculty, we're going to review all those applications and materials. We may very well ask you to join us, just like we are tonight, um, in a video uh, conference interview, you and your partner, just to get a better sense of you and your work. Uh, again, we are not sure exactly how many applicants we'll have. We're not sure exactly how many we'll be able to accept, um, if we can go from 24 to 48 or something like that. But we might um, end up doing some kind of scheduled interview or something like that. All right, um, then our hope is that that Tuesday after Memorial Day, you're gonna know, hey, here it is, you're ready, we're good, we're set. Ideally, we might wanna try to get you maybe like the Friday before Memorial Day, but we might need that little extra weekend and time to organize everything. Um, I know that's a very quick turnaround, but then you'd mark your calendar for June 1st. And what will happen from June 1st to August 15th is, as Mike was saying, we're gonna have that really intensive first set of classes um, and you will be engaged. You'll be meeting regularly as a cohort. You'll be meeting with your mentor. You'll be working with your partner, um, developing coursework. Some of your coursework will still be individual, just like you would typically expect. Some of it will be more collaborative where you're working with your partner and building um, your materials. In the fall, we slow down just a little bit and we go back to our normal eight week schedule. So again, fall one is that late August to October and then fall two is that October, November, December. Um, same thing in the spring, we slow down. You have just the one class to focus on in January and February, the second class to focus on in March and April. And then next summer, we pick it right back up again and we go um, with those three concurrent classes stretch those out from May to August and you'll be working on your final projects and, and things like that. And then in August of 2021, we will be celebrating your success and your next steps forward um, with your partner and um, your progress in your school district. Um, I'm gonna pause for just a moment. Mike, do you see anything else in the timeline that I should highlight? Does that capture most of it? No, I think, I think that's pretty compressed and pretty descriptive. <laughs> All right, perfect. So let's get back to the, the pricing question here really quick. Again, um, we are not 100% sure about how and when and where all the fees will be um, figured out, but trust us, we've got people working on that, as Katie said. We've got people in admissions, financial aid, billing. We've got all kinds of people that are trying to figure out a fair and equitable way for the billing to happen. Um, again, we've also, I'm towing the party line right now and saying that um, you may want to join this as an individual, but we've got the approval to do this um, for partners coming in together. So right now, if you're an individual and for whatever reason we can't find you a partner or you're unable to find a partner, I think the answer is probably going to be no. Um, Again, we're taking all these questions back to the Dean, President, and Provost to get their stamp of approval on all of this when everything is said and done. A um, couple other things, uh, same type of thing, you know, if you're from outside of Michigan, I don't think that applies to anyone on the webinar tonight, but I have had a few emails, so I just want to make it clear that right now we've been given approval to do this for teachers within the state of Michigan. Um, if we get overwhelming response, again, we'll, we'll take that back to the administration. Um, all right, I think we're gonna pause just for a moment to see if there are any other major questions about the nature of the specialized cohort. And then I'm gonna turn it back over to Tony for a few slides to talk about Global Campus and some of the other services that we provide uh, to help you in your online experience. But um, I'm looking in the chat. I think those questions have been answered. Any other questions we can answer right now? And of course, we'll still have time for Q&A here before we get done. All right, I think we'll, Tony, we'll turn it back over to you for a few moments here. All right, thank you, Dr. Hicks. 
Um, so this program is delivered through CMU's global campus uh, arm. <clears throat> I just wanted to point out a few things and, and give a little distinction to what that means. So global campus is nothing more than a delivery system. So that's going to include our online program offerings. It would include any of our satellite centers in and around Michigan. So we've got four to five centers in Metro Detroit, um, centers in Grand Rapids, Lansing, Saginaw, Traverse City. Global campus uh, basically from our inception 50 years ago was identified and created to bring the educational opportunity to the student. So as opposed to having to come to a campus setting uh, main campus setting, we're bringing the education opportunity to you. So technology obviously has evolved over the time and has created that opportunity. This being a fully online program, uh, it's delivered through global campus, but all that means is we're the delivery mechanism, the inception of the program, the quality of the program, the faculty, uh, all those sort of core components of what the program is, is created through the College of Education and Human Services. And then you're talking with two, two of the lead guys within the educational technology sort of unit within the college with our program director, Dr. Hicks, and then Dr. DeShriver. So it gives really that stamp of quality on where the program is, uh, is created from and that expertise. Global Campus is simply a delivery arm. But with that delivery arm, you do have individuals like myself, Katie Bowman, and then a number of other sort of colleagues on our end that really come behind you that, to support you in, in being successful. And that's gonna leverage, again, about 50 plus years of delivering programs at a distance. So we've got a number of systems in place um, to really help, I call it building a circle of support around you. Uh, and then just as a little bit of a highlight, we do have as a global campus programs uh, offered in all 50 states, we're authorized with our online programs. And then we do have face-to-face -face programs in 13 states and in the province of Ontario. All right, I think this kicks it back over to Dr. DeShriver and you, Dr. Hicks. Thanks, yeah, I think we've covered quite a bit of this, but Mike, is there anything else you wanted to say really quickly on this slide? I'm no, I think I'm good. I think we kind of covered most of that earlier. Okay, perfect. All right, we'll just go ahead and advance. And again, Dr. Hicks, I think you um, highlighted a number of aspects of the cohort program and Dr. DeShriver as well. I don't know if there's anything additional you may want to add on this particular slide. Um, no, again, I, I think the neat part about this one, I mean, in our regular program, like you do have that cohort or you interact with some of the same students from class to class to class. But this is definitely going to be very intentional and you know it's one thing to participate in discussion boards and the occasional zoom chat um, in one class and then maybe not again until another class uh, eight weeks later um, but we're really focusing on the intent of learning with you and from you uh, because we are all trying to figure out what this means to uh, teach and learn in these remote settings and so I personally am very excited about this cohort because I know I'm gonna learn a lot from working with my K-12 colleagues. Um, with that in mind, um, the normal order of courses is going to be, again, kind of condensed and changed a little bit. I, I gave a salad bar analogy with our last webinar, and that is let's imagine we have all 10 of our courses, the four that you see here, as well as the ones that you see here, and the you're going to have opportunity to take an elective but let's say we put all those out on the buffet and then we're going to take the best assignments from the different courses that meet your needs at particular times so one great example is that even though this summer the course numbers may be 590 and um, 642 and 643 um, there are definitely some assignments from 708 that we're probably going to move forward in the sequence and even though you won't be technically enrolled in 708 until later on we'll we'll take some of that other curriculum from say 642 and we'll save it and it's also going to be iterative we're going to be learning with you and learning from you as i just mentioned a moment ago and this is going to give us an opportunity to revisit those ISTE standards to think about what's happening in 
virtual and hopefully again eventually physical classrooms and make sure that we're trying to find new research articles, um, the most pertinent types of resources that are going to be valuable for you as you do your assignments and your research. So with that, um, again, I think this one goes back to you, Tony. Sure, thank you. So academic rigor, and I know the faculty can speak to this, um, but in servicing all the online programs, what I generally hear is, um, again, we've sort of talked about the, um, the quality of the program. It is a master's degree program. So uh, graduate level courses require graduate level work, uh, especially something like this, where you're sort of um, have a little bit of, a, of an accelerated pace to it to a degree. Um, but we are, as, a, as an institution, Central Michigan University is ranked as one of the 100 um, most productive small research uh, universities in the nation. So you'll obviously will get to work, re uh, work with a lot of faculty who are do, doing cutting edge research in the, um, this area of education. Uh, but you'll find that the professors, while demanding, they're also understanding. And I think a lot of that um, is the re realization that they're working with a I call it adult population, but a population that is working in the workforce, working full time, balancing family. Um, so what I've learned when working with the with faculty like Dr. Hicks and Dr. DeShriver is open communication goes a long way. So as uh, you may have assignments and as life sometimes happens, it's that open dialogue and that rapport you build with your professors that um, helps carry you through. So. There is a rigorous aspect to the program, but also the, the faculty, again, being very student-centric, um, know how to work with a population that they may be juggling family in a full-time um, profession as well. So I'll kind of tick this, uh, tee this up, but I'd love to hear Dr. Shriver's and Dr. Hicks' opinion on learning management systems. Um, Central Michigan University as an institution utilizes Blackboard, so it's sort of the hub of your uh, online experience where assignments may be posted. You can create uh, different types of dialogue with your fellow course um, colleagues in the, in the different discussion and chat rooms. It'd be, it's gonna be that hub where you're uploading your assignments and you may receive um, feedback on, on assignments. So it's sort of the hub of the platform. Um, but Dr. Hicks, I know, and Dr. DeShriver, you're obviously introducing many technologies to the students. So you probably have a different perspective on Blackboard than um, than I might have from a high level. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just add that um, given the focus on K-12 online learning in this particular cohort, we're gonna try to get you exposure to as many different LMSs as possible. Your school may have already chosen one for you, but like I said, I usually teach a class that's about you know, designing an online module for like a week just to get some um, experience in doing that. And we look at five different LMSs in that class. I know Schoology is really big in K-12 schools. Canvas is getting more um, exposure. Google Classrooms is really big. Edmodo's got, so the classes that you take may be run by Blackboard, but you'll get exposure to a lot of other LMSs in some different ways. And maybe by the end of the, of the thing, if we've got 20 out of 24 students who are using Schoology at their schools, maybe we'll, we'll teach one of our classes in Schoology so we can practice what we preach a little bit and all learn a little bit together. It's kind of the same thing with the video. Um, we would usually use something called WebEx that comes with Blackboard. Um, you can see we're in Zoom today. Um, you can use Google Hangouts. And as these experts we'd like you to develop into, we would also like you to be able to develop um, the ability to go into your administrators and say, hey, why are we using Blackboard? Because Schoology can do this for us and Zoom can do this for us. And we think this would meet the needs of our K-12 students and teachers a lot better. You know, so some of it will be about practicing these technologies and some of it will be about becoming teacher leader advocates for the ones that you think are best for your students and for your schools. So you will get, you will get exposed to a lot of different ones over the course of the 15 weeks. Um, by and large, the one thing you can guarantee will happen with Blackboard is all your grades will be in there. But otherwise you may, you know, like one of the classes I run is run on a, um, a blog web. It's, a, um, it's just a blog and I update the, the weekly assignments on that and you get to see the affordances of the constraints of working in that medium as an LMS too. So um, you, will, you will get a lot. Okay, I'm gonna bring in my colleague, Katie Bowman, to really dig into some of the student services that are uh, available. So these are just some high level ones. Again, I think this is an area as an institution um, we really do excel in. And it, again, it's sort of building a level of support underneath you or around you 
to really help ensure your success. So Katie, I don't know if you want to touch on some of these uh, different student services that the university tries to put in place for folks. Sure, absolutely. Um, part of the scope of my job as, as assistant director of enrollment is to actually assist you throughout what we call the enrollment funnel. So from the time that you, you know, apply, get through the application process and the admission process, and then getting you actually through the program. So um, I'm charged with registering you for all of your classes, monitoring your progress, making sure that you stay on track. And if, you know, life happens, different, um, you know, extenuating circumstances or events that you weren't anticipating, you know, come up, we'll work through those. I, I as, as Tony had mentioned earlier, serve as a first point of contact for a multitude of different questions and concerns, work very closely with Dr. Hicks and the rest of the faculty um, to help provide that support net and that support system for our students. So outside of that, we do um, have a, a multitude of, of different services and resources available for our students. We have two different textbook vendors, one being our CMU bookstore. Uh, if you're close to campus, you can walk in there and get any materials that you might need. They also have online ordering and ship daily. We also partner with MBS Direct or uh, Barnes and Noble College. They're going through a rebranding they're one of our other preferred book vendors. So we have um, you know, a couple of different options for students to purchase their, their course materials. We also have a fantastic uh, library services. Our library is part of a larger consortium of libraries. Uh, we have documents on demand. So if there's not a full text article that's available or you actually want a hard copy of a, of a book or a print piece, Documents on demand will get that to you. They'll either um, email it or actually ship you a copy out with return service label. Um, our librarians are fantastic. Anytime you're embarking on some re research, I would encourage you to reach out via chat, phone, or email to a librarian and just say, this is my topic, this is what I'm looking for, and they'll come back with here are the databases that you should focus on based on that information that you need. Here are some search criteria and search terms that are going to help get you to that place. So fantastic um, award-winning library services. We also have a writing center. So any type of proposals or research that you're writing, any type of writing piece for that matter, you can submit to our writing center and they're, they're peer reviewed and, and they will go through and provide you feedback. They'll look for uh, you know, APA formatting. If, if it's been a while since you've had to do a paper in APA format, they'll, they'll assist you with that. They'll help with source citing, general grammar and punctuation, and um, just general feedback on your piece. So even the strongest writers find the, the writing services or the writing center to be a valuable resource. We also have a really comprehensive student portal through Central Link. Once you log into Central Link, you have you know, one click access into Blackboard, into your email, your financial aid account. Uh, you can pull up your bill, your academic history, request transcripts. So the Central Link portal will be kind of an integral part of your CMU experience and, and mainly where you'll log in to access other CMU systems. Again, just to hit, hit on the registration piece, uh, all students who are admitted whether it's this cohort or, or a future one potentially, sign a registration agreement, which is your commitment to the program and to the sequence of courses. And it also authorizes myself or my team to go ahead and, and register you accordingly. So all of that will be taken care of. That, that's a big piece that is moved off your plate. Very good, thank you, Katie. And then in, in addition to uh, those types of services, we do have a financial aid team that, um, is available to you as well for uh, assistance. Dr. Hicks sort of hit on some of those aspects with this particular, um, the special opportunity and the university sort of working through kind of the nuts and bolts of what that might look like. What I just wanna highlight here is just realize it's another team. So there's a whole nother team available to sort of assist you in how this financing part um, may be put together. So that's anything from filling up the FAFSA form and assistance there. Um, payment plans that might be available as, as uh, solutions are identified. So again, it's sort of an extended team or an extended bench of opportunity for you to just kind of make the, the educational opportunity a reality. All right, I think Dr. Hicks, I'll kick this one over to you. 
Okay, thanks. Yeah, again, we just want to be 100% transparent here. Um, so you see that 9990 cost, there are definitely going to be two additional costs, the $50 application fee and at the end, hopefully, it's still the same, next summer, the $50 graduation fee. So there's $100 of those fees. There's also something that CMU implemented maybe a little over a year ago called the student service fee that applies to both on campus and online students. That's $225 per semester, which would then um, total up to $900. We are not sure. That was one thing the president and provost and dean were not absolutely clear on as to whether or not that fee was going to be waived. Um, or whether that was going to um, be in addition to the 9990. So there is a possibility that you're going to have, well, there's definitely $100 for those two fees, and then there might be the 900. Still, we are cautiously optimistic that you'll still find this to be an incredible value and an opportunity for you uh, to work with a partner and do um, some really amazing work. Um, I'm going to move into the admissions requirements really quickly and also um, Dr. Shriver is going to drop a link to that additional separate Microsoft form in, thank you sir, um, where that is the document that in addition to the normal CMU application that you and your partner are each going to fill out, you together are going to fill out and you're going to write that essay and you can take a look at that and look at the requirements. Um, quick tip, I found out, you know, uh, Zoom stopped making links, uh, hyperlinks a while ago due to security issues. I think if you highlight that um, bit.ly short link there and then you right click on it and go to services and then there'll be a button that says you can open the URL. So you can open that up if you need to. Um, general admission requirements, um, no GMAT, GRE or MAT. Um, we're looking for a 3.0 or higher undergrad, but if you have a lower undergrad GPA, you can write a statement of purpose and provide a resume uh, to let us know what was going on and what experiences you've had since then. Um, you'll submit your transcripts. And then this recommendation letter, again, that is something that your principal, curriculum director, superintendent, someone in your district is going to um, send that in they can either just write the text directly in an email and send it to the MALDT at cmish.edu, or they can write it in a regular Word document and either send the Word document or send a PDF, um, but they will send that letter in. That is not something that you turn in. We would ask that the administrator send that to us at this next email address that I'll show in the next slide. But I think, Katie, did I miss anything on this slide that you wanted to cover? I think you covered it that just um, I know there has been a little bit of confusion about you know where where do we apply or or things like that so submit the regular CMU graduate application with that is the $50 application fee and then start requesting your transcripts if you didn't attend CMU as your as your undergrad institution we do need transcripts from all previously attended um, schools so even if you had transfer credit from a community college that went into your bachelor's institution, we will require those. So um, you might want to start working on that. That's usually the piece that takes the longest. Okay, thank you. All right, so a couple other things about financial aid. Uh, any, any major things you want to say about that? We've kind of hit on some of these things already. Yep, I think we've hit on these. Um, we will share this deck. So Dr. Hicks will share this deck with you so you have a um, point of reference that you can refer, uh, refer back to for um, additional assistance if need be. Yep, perfect. All right, and again, um, you already have that short link uh, in your Zoom chat, but you'll also get the link to it here and that will take you out to that Microsoft form. So I'm gonna see if that'll work for me here. Let me stop sharing on my PowerPoint. And we have, perfect, a few minutes open for questions as well, which is what we were, we were planning for. We're grateful that the uh, timing worked out is the way we thought it would. And again, this is what that um, uh, form will look like. So again, um, you'll go in, you'll enter your school district name, you'll click next, and then you'll go in. And those essay questions too, we might drop those in the chat. We'll also send them out in the follow-up email 
um, there's those essay questions that you'll want to be writing that together with your partner and submit that as part of this form. So yeah, let's see what questions might you have at this point. So Carrie asks, I'm an occupational therapist who works in a school district in Midland. So wondering if this is something that I can apply to. Again, I think if you're within the district and you're partnering with another educator within the district that meets the spirit and intent of what um, we had proposed this program as so far, um, I will get a very clear, concise answer on that to say yay or nay. Uh, my strong suspicion is that that would be considered within the intent of what we had originally said. We wanted educators from the same district, and I think that that definitely fits. Um, oh, you're very welcome. Glad that it was straightforward. Thank you very much. Um, is ISTE certification included? Ah, okay. So the way the ISTE certification works, and I'd be curious to know, Sheila, if you already took like the two-day training and maybe you're in the online experience or something like that. The way that ISTE certification works in this case is that, um, okay, yep, so <laughs> I have bad news. It's probably not going to help you as much if you've already taken the two-day sequence um, because what happens is we have our curriculum aligned. We have about 14 or 15 assignments that are all aligned with the ISTE standards and the ISTE review team has looked at them and said, oh yeah, this assignment meets that standard at the foundational level. And then that other assignment meets this standard at the applied practice level. And what we will do with you is say, here's a list of all these assignments that you're gonna encounter across all 10 courses. Here's where they align with ISTE standards. Now we're not ISTE reviewers. Ultimately, you would have to submit your portfolio to ISTE and that would be a $200 fee that you and ISTE would have to work out together. Um, and then they would give you feedback on your portfolio. But the good news is we already kind of know what they're looking for and we have designed assignments in alignment with those standards. So as long as you're doing the assignments and writing your reflections that would ultimately go in your ISTE portfolio, chances are pretty good that they're going to give you a stamp of approval on your portfolio. Again, we're not ISTE, we're not the auditors of the portfolio, but we would coach you and mentor you in that process. So Sheila, yes, it's part of the process, but you might already be getting a lot of that with that other class that you're already kind of taking, maybe through McCall or one of the other organizations. Um, not to say you couldn't work on it while you're working on classwork for us too. All right, other questions, concerns? Main priority in selecting a graduate program is finding one that opens up new opportunities for me as a classroom teacher. So realistically, what kind of jobs positions would this degree qualify us for? So definitely when um, we had our academic um, advisory research team start looking um, and we quite literally just got their report like on Monday and I have to read the whole thing, but they had occupational um, names like instructional coach, instructional designer, technology coach, um, technology director. Tony, you might even know some of those off the top of your head. What were, were there other categories of job titles that, that we've known and been looking at? Um, in the education setting, those are the big ones. There's also, um, again, working with sort of the, the full multitude of um, online programs that are out there. I can say that we often align this program with the talent development audience. So if you were to look at crossing over outside of education and um, ATD, the Association for Talent Development, <clears throat> um, training and development will be another aspect when you look at really sort of a, a for-profit business community. Um, there's a big push in how do they leverage technology in sort of that setting. So this, this program actually plays very well for those professionals as well. If they're in a talent development situation, a training development, they're not involved in a, a K-12 or an educational setting. So I would say to answer your question, um, not only within the school setting from a K-12 to higher ed, because any of our online programs at the college, they go through an instructional design process, but then if you were to look outside of sort of an educational setting, this, this program would certainly give you 
opportunity in that environment. If I can just add one, just because I work a lot with our doctoral program, one, one area that we're also seeing, it, it, there's a shortage of people that have expertise in designing K-12 online learning is actually in higher ed. So let's say you finish this program and you're really excited about what we're doing and you decide your long-term goal is to maybe work in a college of education somewhere as a technology expert, you could possibly go through our doctoral program or another doctoral program in educational technology. And when you come out of that, this special cohort experience would actually give you an advantage over other people with PhDs applying for ed tech because you would have this expertise in online learning that you could then apply directly to the audience that you would have as a faculty member. Um, and that path can take a lot of different routes and you could be an adjunct for a while and then a visiting for a while, you know, there, but it is, it is an area, the expertise in K-12 online learning is, is a shortage in all areas of the country right now. Um, so I, I agree with Tony 100%. It's also a great on-ramp to getting into that training um, aspect. I mean, you're gonna see now places like AT&T, places like, um, law firms that are going to want to be able to work from home and do their trainings virtually because of situations like this. So it's going to open up avenues in multiple directions. Fantastic. Any other questions? Anyone want to take the microphone or um, have anything else that we can add? And again, Katie, you are always really good at catching the things that, that I forget. So if there's anything that you feel that I've missed over the last hour, I uh, definitely appreciate that. The recording will be available. Yep, I'm going to download the Zoom recording. I will get the YouTube video processed. I'll turn it into an unlisted video. Uh, Tony will share all your email addresses with me and then I will email that out to you. Give me hopefully till tomorrow morning to get through all of that process if you would uh, be so kind. But Sheila, if you haven't heard from me by like five o'clock tomorrow, feel free to send a nudge and say, hey, you promised a video and links to the slide deck. Please do that and I will do that. All right, well, with that in mind, we are coming to the top of the hour. And as I said in the chat room, we will hang out for a few minutes after I hit pause on the recording. If anyone does want to chat more informally and not have everything saved for posterity, um, I thank Tony for organizing tonight, Katie for all the support that you offer all of our students from the beginning all the way from application to graduation. Uh, my colleague, Dr. DeShriver, thank you for being here and for being the brainstorming thinking partner on this whole thing. And uh, we really uh, do appreciate your interest. And hopefully you felt a little bit of our passion and our excitement about this opportunity to work with you come through in our conversation this evening. Uh, as I've said, this is going to be a learning experience for us all. And the opportunity to work with you as you are building the future of education in Michigan it's genuinely humbling and exciting uh, to be part of this. And so I know that I'm very much looking forward to it. Well, thank All you, right. Dr. Hicks, and you're, you're modest, but um, Dr. Hicks and Dr. DeShriver were big uh, proponents in, in identifying a need as they communicated with their um, students and folks in the field. So um, thank you for um, championing this opportunity for educational community and bringing it forward to our the Dean of the College and the President. So I wanna thank you for that on record. And then for everyone attending this evening, thank you for your interest and participation. Um, as the marketer, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask a slight favor and that's relying on you from a word of mouth standpoint. That's always the, the best form of marketing. So as you're out there trying to find that partnership aspect, um, some of it might come up from the ground up and that's just you communicating with your colleagues and um, helping them become aware of the opportunity as well. All right, well, thank you all for being here tonight. Again, after we pause the recording here, we'll hang out for a few extra minutes, enjoy the rest of your evening, and we very much look forward to seeing your applications. Have a good rest of your night. <laughs>